the light side of this temple mm-hmm. and the dark side of this temple. And they say that if you stand in the center, you can experience pure neutrality. So I put one hand to the right side, could feel all of my dark, horrible feelings from my life. And then on the left side, I reach out my other hand and I could see images of my little girl playing in her room, this innocence, this purity, and wanted to take all of the dark sh- that I had just felt and seen in that temple. And I wrote it all down in my journal. I'm like, I'm going to release all of this. It's no longer serving me. And I shredded these papers and I threw it into the water. I remember sitting back down and closing my eyes and I heard spirit say to me, Jessica, these are not the pieces of you to throw away. These are the pieces of you to love. Well, hello there and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. I have a beautiful conversation with a newer friend, Jessica Zweig, on today's show. We are talking about all the things. She has a wonderful new book out called The Light Work, Reclaim Your Feminine Power, Live Your Cosmic Truth, and Illuminate the World. There you see it. I'll tell you a little bit about Jess if you don't know her. She is a serial entrepreneur, and she founded three businesses and recently sold her agency, Simply Be, the nation's premier personal branding company. Her first book, which was called Be, A No Bullshit Guide to Increasing Your Self-Worth and Your Net Worth by Simply Being Yourself, which I loved, and her forthcoming, which actually is out right now, The Light Work, as I just described, which is very exciting. She has a top-ranked podcast that actually I am going on soon, The Spiritual Hustler. And with Jess, she's really, in this book, there is an invitation, right, to reclaim your feminine power, which we talked about. And really, it, it's about illuminating the world with your own light and how to do that. So many of us are type A women. And, you know, sometimes we refer to as alpha women. And there's something so, such a, a beautiful invitation to do success differently, to soften into the feminine. I really think that you're going to love this conversation with Jessica Zweig as much as I really loved talking to her. You guys, I am so excited to welcome my pal Jessica Zweig to the Terry Cole Show. Welcome, Jess. Oh, Terry, it's so good to be with you. Like every chance I can get, I'm going to take. This is extra special. And you know what? We've had a lot of chances lately, which has been I know kind of amazing. I almost feel like we've been sort of touring together. Super 100%. duper exciting. And we have more coming up, right? We have, we have more uh-huh. things yeah. coming up together. But what I want to talk about, what we're going to talk about, because it literally just happened two days ago, you dropped the most amazing book. So it's called The Light Work, Reclaim Your Feminine Power, Live Your Cosmic Truth, Illuminate the world. And this book really, this is yes. Yes to now. Yes to what we need. Yes, yes, yes. So, and I know you're getting lots of feedback from from people already having massive epiphanies from this and what it means to them. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the origin of the light work for yourself? Why did you write this book? What inspired you to write this book? And then tell us who it's for. Yeah. So I love writing books. I love. I enjoy launching books. I, I'm a writer. It's my art, actually, at my core, mm. more than the business woman avatar that I like to play as well. I'd written my first book, B, um, which was a number one bestseller. Did really, really well. It was more of a business focused book, and it was hugely successful. It totally like popped off. Was on all the things, and right around like sort of the the din of that peak launch moment, I was like, I think I want to write a second book. And I know I wanted to have the word light in the title. And I'm a very spiritual person more than I I am, I think, identify as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I've I've always been on this journey. And I really wanted to bring together spiritual empowerment for women, high-performing women into into a second book. But something happened right after my book launch, number one. I fell into a deep, dark state of burnout and Mm -hmm. depression. And just simply couldn't pick myself up off the floor from that and had no choice but to really focus on my then business, my agency that I was in the midst of scaling. While that sounds very sexy and I I recently sold my business, there was a lot of chaos (laughs) Mm -hmm. when you grow real fast, breaks and you as the founder, owner, entrepreneur, CEO is kind of the, the helm of all of that. So to answer your question, Terry, I had put the book concept aside to heal, to really reconcile my life. And I took a very fortuitous trip to Egypt Mm -hmm. at the end of 2022, 
which had come at the real peak of my year of burnout. And I say that I went to that country, one version of myself, and came back new. I, I literally died. I had an ego death in one of those temples. I write about it in the light work. Mm -hmm. And I came home from that trip and I'm like, I know what my book is really supposed to be about. And so I got a book deal for it within a month. And because I'd been working on the proposal for like a year and a half, mm -hmm. like on and off the shelf, channeled the whole thing in three months. Like I wrote, I did not use AI. I did not use a ghostwriter. I freaking wrote it <laughs> in three months. And it's my true message in the world, this book. And I'm really excited to have it out now that people can read it and experience it. It's so wild. I want to know for you, because you were and are well known as a very successful entrepreneur and helping people scale their businesses and doing all that. That's what you were sort of doing before you, this power pivot, this Egypt experience, moving yeah. you towards talking about stuff that is really more your heart's delight or your heart's yeah. desire, right? What part of you had a hesitation to write a book with light in the cover and to talk about spiritual things and mm. cosmic truths. What mm. what part of you had some hesitation? Any part? Oh my God, a huge part. I, I so I got my galley. I got my own galley a couple months, you know, before pub date. And I'm like, oh yay, I get to hold my own book in my hands and actually read it again. And I this was a few months ago. I was sitting in bed like nine o'clock at night. I started reading my own book. And I literally feel like I'm about to hi hyperventilate and have a, like a, a small panic attack because I'm like, I f I, I'm right. I, I'm writing that. I wrote this. I'm sharing this with the world. Mm -hmm. People are, wh what are people going to think of me? Because it's so unapologetically truthful around my beliefs. And yes, like to your point, I've been an entrepreneur, slinging deals, giving talks with Fortune 500 executives. Like oh. now I'm going to talk about the Palladians and, and like DNA. <laughs> so the point is... I had my meltdown. I got to my altar the next morning. I practice what I preach. And I closed my eyes and I asked for support. And I heard spirit say to me, Jessica, this is not about you. It's your time to now get out of the way. That's what it, spirit said. Get out of the way. I channeled this book. Like I said, it came from a higher part of me. I wrote it for a reason. I really believe it's coming out at a time that people are ready ready for mm. to receive this kind of spiritual codes in a very accessible sort of Jessica Zweig real talk kind of way. Yeah. And I, I'm standing in it. It's not any less scary, but I'm standing in it. There, there's a certain um, point, though, I think that what you're describing, the, the breakdown before the breakthrough. Yeah. And it's like needing to get to a point of... Mm -hmm. Something is not aligned yes. with yeah. my my truest heart. Like something is not aligned, but it does take courage. And I mm -hmm. love the book. I think it's great. And I think that part of what you're doing is giving us all permission to be more of our true selves. Because I know that many people who started following you probably years ago started following you. Listen, your message has changed and transformed over the years. And if anyone is following you and reading it, they know that that has been changing. But I think that for me, there is a real permission mm. in this book, The Light Work, mm. to be more of my full self and to be okay with not having the answers, you know, as a therapist and as an expert, so to speak, and not, not like a guru or anything, but just someone who, you You're know, an expert. We, we have answers, you know. Yeah. But this is almost like um, permission to be a little more mystical, a little more in the feminine, a little more in the divine. And yeah. without it being a book that's so out there that you're like, what the hell is going on in this book? Like, I did not feel that way at all. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, I get what's going on. It makes sense. And the things that are important yes. in this book. So there's a whole bunch of questions that I have and things that I love and stuff that I want to get to because I feel like people listening. So you guys, if you just tuned in, the book is The Light Work, Reclaim Your Feminine Power, Live Your Cosmic Truth, and Illuminate the World by Jessica Swig. I think you guys are going to love it. You can get it everywhere. Fine books are sold. Anyway, let's talk about, because this is a big thing in my community, and I think in any community that's filled with people who identify as women, building your mm. right relationship with your body. So mm. your battle 
with burnout, because I've been talking quite a bit about my own burnout stuff, and autoimmune issues, which so many of the women in my crew have autoimmune issues. So please share with us how to get right with our bodies. (laughs) First of all, thank you for bringing this question into the conversation, because that chapter called Body, Your Sacred Vessel Mm. is one of my favorite chapters of them all. They're all like my little children. Mm -hmm. That one is like one of my most, I think, important, Mm -hmm. because everything really comes back to the body. And I was body dysmorphic in my 20s, abused myself with diet culture and overworking out and didn't get my period for two years because I was so underweight. There's just this deep programming and spell, I call it, that women Mm -hmm. have around, oh, our bodies aren't good enough for X, Y, and Z. Well, after my body dysmorphia in my 20s came my autoimmune disorder in my 30s. Mm. And I had chronic sinusitis, brain fog, fatigue, basically mono for a decade. And I surrendered all of my sovereignty to Western medicine. Mm. Deep respect for anyone who chooses to be a doctor, but that particular approach failed me. Mm. And I really had to become my own healer. And in my 40s, I hit burnout. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I ran my nervous system into the ground. And really what I'm calling women home to in this book, and this is my journey, I'm a student as much as I am the teacher, Mm -hmm. that our bodies are sacred technology and that we outsource our power, our worth, our health, our success to all of these external factors that that we think hold the keys. Mm -hmm. And when we really remember that our bodies are literally encoded with light, not to get too too science-y, but we have 500 trillion cells that make up our body, these microorganisms that inside have chromosomes, inside that is DNA threads, inside of the DNA threads are are genes Mm -hmm. that are literally electricity. Our bodies are made of light. We are encoded with light. And we care so much about calories and the perfect pill to pop or even the the incredible amount of success we want to achieve and the schedule that we have to create to get there and run them to the ground. Right. And my invitation in this book, especially in that chapter, is like, let's remember that we are technology and come home to the beauty, the gift, the sacredness to be in a in a feminine body. Mm-hmm. I love that chapter. I'm so here for that conversation because women have kind of become disassociated with how magnificent our vessels are. And it all starts in the body, our joy, our healing, our pleasure, our expansion. Yes. So how how did you, though, for you, Mm -hmm. Because I feel like with my clientele, a lot of high-functioning codependents and high-achieving women, and part of the struggle that I think that we have, because I do certainly put myself in that category, is what shifted for you or what do you suggest that people do to avoid burnout? What did you start doing that you weren't doing? Yeah, I love that you asked this. So after sprinting up a mountain for five and a half, six years, picked myself up off the floor of burnout, started to, yes, heal my nervous system. I started grounding. I bought, I invested in a PEMF mat. I started hydrating with more mineralization, getting into nature, practicing boredom, right? But I realized picking my head off the ground and the end of that journey, I was like, where has the joy been? Mm-hmm. Like, where where has joy been? A central part of my life. I was so consumed with, and thank you for bringing up your clients. I'm definitely a high functioning codependent myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can take a session later, Terry. <laughs> I, I'm recovering and I feel like unhooking myself from the busyness, from the toxic masculine patriarchal paradigm that in order for me to win as a woman, I had to run at this rate, like just waking up to that. Mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of research for this book. And I studied all of these texts on the divine Sophia, the matriarchy, the goddess medicine. And we really have lost our way. We're playing a game written literally by men for men in 2024. And me simply realizing that I, based on my feminine body, was designed to do things differently, to slow down, to play, to create, to enjoy the flowers, to picking up art supplies and drawing like a little girl. I live in the amazing city of Nashville. There's an ecstatic dance party here every other weekend during the day, like sober dancing. It's the best. (laughs) Like I would go to comedy clubs, make sure my husband and I were seeing live music, like really recognizing 
that if in order for my burnout to heal, I had to make joy my job. Mm. And that's really what 2023 is, 2024 has also been. And when I wrote this book, really represented for me. That when you really think about it, though, just how radical an idea that is, even though it's an idea we've heard and we certainly talk about, and we're like, of course, more joy. Who doesn't want that? But what you're really describing is saying, you need to schedule it. You need to yeah. Oh, yeah. pre-plan. You need to be proactive. You need to say, what is it that I need to yes. actually nourish myself? Yes. It's funny. Yes. I'm finding that for many years, like I was all into just like crime and, you know, special victims unit and all the CSIs and all the things. And I started about three years ago. I was like, I love to laugh. I love comedians. Mm-hmm. I need more humor. I need more laughing yeah. in my life. I laugh with my friends. I laugh with Vic, of course. But this was like intentional and planning. And I just started obsessively watching stand up. And I'm still watching a ton of stand up. And I feel like that falls into the same category of, well, how do I want to feel? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really does come down to that. And we have to be intentional and devoted and committed yep. and disciplined. It sounds counterintuitive. To, to making practices a non-negotiable, yep. to raise your frequency, to get you back into your heart. Laughter is medicine. Movement is medicine. Nature is medicine. I remember in my year of healing, like I was working 100-hour weeks. Mm. I literally had to give myself a, an alarm, like you're going to close your computer at three o'clock and go for a walk. It sounded audacious. It felt audacious. Mm-hmm to not use that time for productivity, but instead for stillness and listening to the birds chirp. Like, but find your comedy, find your dance, find your birds chirping. But once you find it, hold yourself accountable and build in structure so that you can heal. Yeah. Part of what you're talking about though, Jess, and, and what you you share with us in the book is about, like, it's not just about productivity, right? And that yeah. that is a you know, as I like to say, a one-way ticket to bitter land if that's the only thing we're focusing on. Mm-hmm. And real productivity, like not just dollars and cents productivity, but yeah. joyful productivity, something that feels good. You're adding something to the planet. You're helping other people. You're like all of those things have to come in. And what you said early on really resonated with, with me that we're, you know, we're, we're indoctrinated into these systems that are yes. made for men by men. And back in the day, the way to succeed, of course, was sort of to do it like a man, like in our in our minds, like or, or in, in yeah. my mind was actually in reality. I didn't even know yeah. that there was a, a way that would be more aligned with my, my physiology, my cycles, my yes. brain, my tender heart, my empathic nature, my all of those things, which would be the opposite of the way that I was doing it when I was in entertainment. As a talent mm-hmm. agent running, you know, it's all about, oh my God, just forward motion yeah. and just rough, right? Just, just, just doing it, just getting it done, whatever the thing is. Yeah. And I think that realizing that you can really be successful on your own terms. Yes. That is what I am here for more than anything, yeah. especially as women. I think we don't realize that before. <laughs> The patriarchy, 4,000 mm-hmm. years, drop a, a bucket in the, the history of time. For hundreds of thousands of years, we were run by a matriarchy. This planet literally was de- designed around the feminine. And I think about like my what you mentioned, my feminine cycle. Like knowing that I have, you know, we have this Arcadian rhythm, the, this, the father, son that we're all 24-7, 365, like hooked into mm-hmm. that runs much the world women get a bonus rhythm we get an infradian rhythm our cycle maps to the moon and we're a different woman every couple days Mm -hmm. and how Mm -hmm. can we design businesses community programs launches book launches ideally around the feminine creature that we are and still win and still quote unquote succeed and i have a lot of um passion for that internalized polarity of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. We can't live in one or the other. And this isn't necessarily even about gender. It's about values and energy and frequencies. Mm -hmm. But that has been my uh, 
dark night of the soul to journey up and out from because I was so in my masculine mm -hmm. and I've really calibrated and, and I'm not only still making great money and succeeding, I am at peace and I, I have so much joy and gratitude and right. fulfillment in a way that I didn't just a few years ago Yeah, ne by negating my feminine body. Someone just asked me a question on something that I was teaching. And basically, because we were talking about high-functioning codependency and talking about hyper-independence. And this woman said, do you think that hyper-independence is unhealthy because it's too masculine? Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, it's not that. It's just that hyper-independence means you're not allowing anyone to give to you. There's no ebb and flow. There's no reciprocity, right? What are we yeah. seeking? Mutuality, right? We want yeah. there to be healthy dependency in a relationship is literally the opposite of codependency. So anyway, it, it just got me thinking about this too, because so much of what you're talking about is a flow in the whole book. There's so much mm -hmm. about being in flow as opposed to yes. going, uh, like fighting the flow of what is natural. You talk about yeah. your sh and your shine, quote unquote. Yeah. So how embracing yeah. your shadows and brilliance lead to radical change. So let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I've been saying this often. I, you know, the book is called the light work, but it could be called the dark work. Mm -hmm. If you really, if you really read it, it's, it's not about, you know, love and light. It's about the deep, dark trauma and shit and failure and heartbreak that comes with being a human being on mm -hmm. this planet. And when we really face it, when we're willing to go through it, mm -hmm. when we most of all claim radical responsibility for our own part in that mess, mm -hmm. which by the way is like mm -hmm. a process, you have a whole new capacity to stand in the truth of who you are. Mm -hmm. Because no one can call you out based on anything you don't already mm -hmm. know about yourself. And my book is one big mirror, hopefully, mm -hmm. for my reader. Uh, I take her through everything from her connection to spirit, if that's, you know, something you've been reconciling mm -hmm. with, to your emotional body, to your physical body, to your personal power, to family trauma, to relationships with lovers, female friendships, how we relate to money and career, how we take care of the planet, how we find our true mission in this life with this deep through line of of femininity as mm -hmm. our superpower. And I just don't think that we can be radically radiant unless mm -hmm. we're willing to really not just look at our shadows, but face our shadows and integrate and alchemize our shadows. Right. And um, that's really, really what the book takes you through. It's, it's, it's some dark, dark stories in this book, yeah. but I felt very called to share them for, for her. Well, part of, again, it's giving permission. It's saying, these are things we go through. These, this is normal. And I feel like I do see a lot of resistance to embracing the shadow because we were all so sure we just indoctrinated into being good girls. And yeah. if you don't have anything nice to say and blah, 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 which yeah. makes you feel like having a shadow is so, um, is so shameful. Shameful. Yeah. And yeah. it's not. And I feel like what you really, the liberation that you're creating with the light work mm -hmm. is this ability to make room for our humanness because yes. it's in the humanness and the truth of who we are because none of us are just the light as we know. We just yeah. aren't. It's just not possible. Yeah. But in making space for that and for me, in my young life, in my you know, 20s and early 30s, it was about having compassion, understanding my shadow, of course, through like the most painful mm -hmm. experiences known to mankind, that they even came into my consciousness. But then having compassion, like whatever shadow you have, whatever, and you know, you guys listening, watching, the, the shadow is, if you don't know, is the part of you that you want to disavow. I mean, how would you describe it, Jess? I would say the shadow is the part of you that is unconsciously hurting and is looking for your love. Mm -hmm. So 
I'll tell a, a quick story yes. from the book. I was in Egypt. This is where the book starts. And we went to this temple called Kom Obo, which our guides had told us was the temple of neutrality. Wasn't it? Neutrality is such a freaking goal. There's a, the light side of this temple mm -hmm. and the dark side of this temple. And they say that if you stand in the center, you can experience pure neutrality. So at one point on the pilgrimage, I was in this temple walking by myself. I put one hand to the right side, could feel all of my dark, horrible, toxic, shameful, angry, disgusting, bitter feelings from my life in the last couple of years, as well as like my family trauma and the shit I inherited from my dad and the shit I had inherited from my mom and how it was affecting my life. And then on the left side, I reach out my other hand and the light side, I close my eyes. I could see images of my little girl playing in her room, this innocence, this purity. So anyway, I go back to our Diabea, this riverboat. We were flo floating down on the Nile for a couple of days and wanted to take all of the dark shit that I had just felt and seen in that temple. And I wrote it all down in my journal and I ripped the piece of paper out and I, I'm like, I'm going to release all of this. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to let it go. It's no longer serving me. And I shredded these papers and I threw it into the water. I was like kind of littering, but anyway, I threw it into the water. But it's biodegradable toy. <laughs> and biodegradable paper. And I, I remember sitting back down and closing my eyes and I heard spirit say to me, Jessica, these are not the pieces of you to throw away. <laughs> These are the pieces of you to love, to learn how to love. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of shadow, and I, I have a whole chapter in the beginning mm -hmm. of the book called, but first a word about the dark, because <laughs> while this book is called The Light Work, we're going in. We are digging deep and we are claiming all of who we are. In order to alchemize it, we have to learn to accept it, to reframe it, to, to learn how to love it. And that's my answer to that question around shadow. I love it. You were like, wait, give me those piece of paper back. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I love you. I really do. I'm sorry. I'm put it all together. <laughs> but it's, it's so actually true because all of the energy and effort. Yeah. Same thing with repressing and denying, though. Like, yeah. And those are unconscious processes that we don't even know are happening as they're happening. But yeah, there's this process of not wanting to see that part and yet i always feel like these are the things that if we don't accept them if we don't honor them that the same way that high functioning codependency is like becomes the glass ceiling of our own making yeah. this is the same thing yes right like yes and i i talk about like the dark versus the light right from a Palladian perspective. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't know what the Palladians are, they're an extraterrestrial star family that lives in the Milky Way. That's from the Palladian constellation that I believe that I am from. So, okay, I just said that. But that's what the, there's a through line in the book around that. <laughs> and um, so you can go pick it up and read more. But when I studied the Palladians for the first time, when I came across their work years ago, they defined for me, and this is broadly known, that light is information. That's the synonym word for light is information encoded in all of the truth of the universe. And darkness is not evil. Darkness is lack of information. Mm. And when we are literally in the dark, when the lights are off and we cannot see, our, we make up stories, we fill in the blanks, we turn into victims, we get afraid. And that's when things become toxic like they putrefy in the dark if we leave the light off too long and some really horrible and evil things and, and not just evil in the world although those are some of the worst offenders like war and hatred and racism and mm -hmm. you know bullying at schools but like our own internalized evil towards ourselves right right and so to bring light to the dark you know is what i'm here to ultimately offer with my own personal stories throughout this book and ultimately bring bring it back to to love because I think that's really the whole name of this game of this human experience and many of us and at times myself of course have forgotten that truth yeah my book is the roadmap home I love it I, I another way thing that I love about the book is that in every chapter, there's an invitation for us, yeah. and every, yeah. it, which is similar to how I write my books too, because it's all about the reader, right? It's all about mm -hmm. it's all about you 
applying. So you, you read a chapter, and then at the end of the chapter, you, the reader, gets to go, okay, so now it's my turn. Now it's about me. Now now mm-hmm. here's the invitation. Here's the information. Here's the mm-hmm. things that I can do, steps that you can take. So it's a very active book, too, in that to me it almost feels like like a little bit like the right amount of workbook at the end of the chapters as opposed to too much because that can be overwhelming and you don't you can't do yeah. you can't be like really reading the book and doing that Th- there's a sweet spot of just enough so you're like oh yeah i know how now to apply this to my life which is of course what you want readers to be doing so you guys if you're just joining don't worry we're not done yet but the light work is the name of the book jessica zwag is the author um, and is Reclaim Your Feminine Power, Live Your Cosmic Truth, and Illuminate the World. And look how pretty that cover is. Isn't it beautiful? I really do love my cover. I love it, too. A lot. It looks great. The key. All right. Thank I have you. a question for you that I ask people who come on the show. This is about boundaries because I'm so obsessed. So what has been your most challenging boundary Whoa. struggle, and how mm-hmm. did you overcome it if you have? This is a good one, Terry Cole. <laughs> um, I would say... I used to be, as an entrepreneur, and a, a what do you call it, overperforming codependency. High-functioning codependency. High-functioning codependency. <laughs> need, my codependency was on validation. Yeah. External validation, people pleasing. External pleasing-y. validation. And being a yes girl, <sighs> really, and this also came from my old former self-scarcity mindset, feeling like I had to say yes all the time because I didn't want to miss the opportunity or I wanted to be, you know, connected and validated or whatever it was. And as I've come home into my own body and my own sovereignty, that's where I find my yeses and nos and where I draw my Mm. boundaries. I have, I like literally have built that right relationship with my body. So if it doesn't feel like a full body, yes, it's a no. And I just feel like my time has become a lot more reserved for right. me. I've co-created a whole new relationship with my schedule. I've been so career focused for so long mm-hmm. and having boundaries around my time mm-hmm. has been my my biggest Achilles heel. But I really have gotten to a point where I have zero qualms about saying no to anything mm-hmm. if it's not right in my body. So that is so amazing, and that is such a huge place to get to. So tell everybody yeah. where they can find you, where they can get your book. Come find me at jessicazweig.com. You can buy The Light Work wherever books are sold. We'll probably still have the thelightworkbook.com. If you get the book, we could send you some extra goodies. Mm-hmm. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, support your lo- local bookshops. And um, come say hi to me on Instagram. Oh, and I have a podcast too. It's called The Spiritual Hustler. Terry's coming on it. Yeah. And uh, we talk about feminine wealth, energetics, how to hustle from a new vibration of meaning and purpose and love and thriving for for all so really i'm excited about the show and just thanks for having me thank you so much for being here i love you i so appreciate you go get this book people you're gonna love it thank you i love you i love you